Hi everyone, I'm Justine, I'm an alcoholic. Hi Justine. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Okay, so I have some experience with these steps as they're laid out in the big book with the help of a big book step study sponsor, a higher power, meetings like this, and people like you guys. I am working on my amends and practicing 10, 11, and 12 each day to the best of my willingness. Um, thank you, Denise, for asking me to come come and speak. It's always good to come to this meeting. I haven't been here in a while. Um, so the second part of step two um, could restore us to sanity. So one of the things that I'm trying to practice in my life is being authentic and, um, and in real time, like as things come up to just say them. Um, so I'm going to try to share with you like what this chapter meant to me today. Um, and I'll, I'll probably refer to when I also was reading with a sponsor, because um, I think that always comes up to me, comes up for me. Um, so one of the things that jumped out at me today when we were reading is like how they start the chapter with talking about um, what sanity really looks like in somebody. Um, and how, you know, we have, I love how they talk about how we have this bond because we've been through a common hardship, but that is nothing compared to the bond that we can build by living in a solution together. And that's been my experience. Um, it's so, so cool to watch people grow and be restored to sanity in this program. It's um, one of the greatest gifts, and I never could have imagined experiencing that. Um, but I love how they point that out, and I love how they talk about um, the guy whose whole deportment shouts at the new prospect um, that he is a man with a real answer. Um, and that's what, you know, that's what I was attracted to about Big Book Step Study. I needed a real answer. I felt insane. Um, in sobriety and you know this taught me what insanity really was like in the preceding chapters and in one and two they sort of set us up for seeing what our life run on self-will looks like um, and you know for me I had no relationship with a higher power when I came into this program. I had been praying um, because that was a suggestion in the program, but I didn't get to this work till I was about a year sober. Um, and I had been praying. I, I was agnostic. Um, I believe there was something, but I didn't feel it. I didn't see it working in my life. Um, so, you know, I, I knew that I needed something. And I had some willingness, and that's about all I had at this point. Um, for me, I don't think I was restored to sanity in step two, like after I read this chapter with my sponsor. Um, it took a little while. Um, and today, I still am human, so I can exhibit insane behavior sometimes, but I have an underlying spiritual solution to that. So I understand that my thinking is insane and alcoholic and that I can't intellectually solve that problem, that I need a spiritual solution. And I know that deep down, and that's always there. I veer from it sometimes, but it, I'm always returned. Um, and that, to me, is what sanity is today. It doesn't mean that I'm perfect all the time. Um, so... One of my favorite things about this chapter is, it's actually one of my favorite things in the book, is the promise on page 25, um, where it talks about, we have found much of heaven and we have been rocketed into a fourth dimension of existence of which we had not even dreamed. Um, I love that promise because that's how I really feel in this work like that has come true for me and what's the fourth dimension i have no idea but like i i feel like i've been there and like that and i and that's really a cool place like the fourth dimension rocketed into it like that's very appealing to me and that was something that i wanted um and this work gave it to me 
And that's only because I had a little bit of willingness at this point in the work. Um, and, I, and I took the action that they talk about. Like, I just had to follow the simple, clear-cut directions in this book. That's all I had to do. And I had to be willing to see just how insane I was and just how broken I was and just how much I needed God, just how much I needed a solution. Um, and something that was always helpful to me at this point um, was to trust in the process. My, my sponsor used to always say, like, trust in the process, because that at this point, I could see that it worked for other people. Like, I saw the tangible result, like people like Denise and people at the meetings who, like, just exuded this beautiful energy that I wanted. And that was, like, what was giving me that willingness to move forward. Um, so at this point, instead of, like, I really tr trusted in just moving forward in the process. That was, like, the beginning of where I started. And now I have a relationship that's personal with a higher power. You know, it's grown into this amazing, beautiful thing, and I get to see God working in my life. Um, and that's really what my spiritual experience has been, is it's a change in perspective. I see things differently. I can see God in my life. Um, I believe that God was always working in my life. I was just not willing to allow it. I, I inflicted my will on everything, um, and that blocked me. That blocked me from my true self, from other people, um, from experience, experiencing life in a beautiful way. Um, so I got a little off track, step two there. But um, yeah, there's so much cool stuff in here. One of the things that I love is the design for living. Um, because for me, part of my insanity, you know, was not just that I picked up a drink and a drug again and again and again, like they talk here. Like some of my insanity was, um, a lot of my insanity, was in my behavior, my alcoholic thinking, like how they say our problem centers in our mind. And, and this really um, got to that for me. Like I understood that I did insane things, like expected a different result and just kept doing them. Um, and I was very self-aware of that, but I had no control over those things, just like I had no control over picking up a drink. So like, I knew that I was jealous. Don't be jealous, Justine. Like, it was just like saying, don't drink, Justine. Like, don't be jealous. Don't be, don't be annoying. Like, I just, I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I was just as insane when it came to that stuff as I was with the drink. So I needed a design for a living. I had no idea how to live. I had no idea how to go grocery shopping or how to pay bills, you know what I mean? Like, and this is what helped me to do all that because I, I need God in all of that stuff. I know that sounds, that sounds crazy to my old crazy self. Um, that was a bit, that didn't make any sense, I'm sorry. But like, <laughs> um, to say that I needed God to help me go grocery shopping was not something I was willing to accept at this point in the work. Like that, I was not that humble. I was, you know, I could do stuff. I, I was a capable person. And now I know that I, I need God in everything. Um, I want God in everything, you know? And that's something that that this work gave me. This work enabled me to see just how broken I was. Um, and they talk about that right before my promise, or the promise that I love. Um, it says, but we saw that it really worked in others and we had come to believe in the hopelessness and futility of life as we had been living it. So that was what happened to me. Like, I knew that I could not continue. I was gifted with 
the knowledge that I could not continue on the path that I was going. Um, and for me, it was really like process of elimination. Like I had exhausted all of the options over here and all that was left for me was to try to do this. And that is a gift that I don't think I realized was a gift at the time, you know? That I was so desperate that I knew I was not willing to continue this way and that door was shut so I had one way to go um, is an absolute beautiful gift that I did not create. God gave it to me. Um, and it's so cool for me to sit up here and like talk about God this way because I had a huge resentment against God when I came in here. And I had no relationship with a higher power. Um, and now I do. And that's a beautiful example of this program, um, of what it can do. And it's, um, it's pretty cool. And I would encourage anybody who's thinking about doing this work or is writing um, to keep going because you can be rocketed into that fourth dimension. So um, I think that's pretty much all I have today. Thanks.